I just want to start by saying, guys, there is literally not a single trade business that watches this podcast or listens to this podcast that does not need to pay attention in this episode. I don't say that lightly either. This is a super, super important podcast where we talk about one of the most overlooked and misunderstood areas of business, profit and finance. And so I have a guest come on the show who has recently written a book called Profit First for Tradies. And Profit First is a framework from a gentleman out of the United States named Michael Mike Markowitz. And I recently have been adopting this into my business and it's made an unbelievable change. This guy's is the biggest breath of fresh air that you could ever possibly imagine. And it comes in the space of having a super clear and transparent understanding of where your costs are within your business and where you allocate your funds to. I'm not going to go into it any further than that. Dive into this podcast. I know you're going to love it. And please, guys, if you head across to the Facebook community, we're going to be doing a giveaway of this wonderful book, Profit First for Tradies. Um, there's a bit of a trick there. You've got, to, you've, got, you've got to jump through a couple of hoops, but essentially you can win yourself a nice signed copy from Katie. I know it is going to be an absolutely invaluable asset to your business especially once you implement this framework it's just i can't tell you guys how much of a breath of fresh air it is anyway i'd love to hear your experience if you guys have current if you guys have implemented profit first or if you have questions about it please let us know in the facebook group otherwise good luck on your journey today's podcast has been proudly brought to you by tradie web guys Trady Web Guys work with tradespeople only on their websites and marketing solutions to help them stand out from their competition. Everything from web design through to SEO, search engine marketing, content creation, you name it guys. It is a customized solution for trade-based organizations and it's fantastic. Head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash apply, fill in the form and let's have a conversation giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Katie, welcome to the Site Shed podcast. Thank you for having me. A newly acclaimed author. Yes, I am. Still How getting into that title. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've had many newly acclaimed authors on the show before and they, they, they all kind of have that, oh, I don't really see myself as an author, <laughs> got it. <laughs> it takes a bit of getting used to, so yeah. it certainly does. So Katie, you're from Profit First for Tradies and we're here today to talk a little bit about the book that you've just written, which was Profit First from tra- for Tradies. Now there's been, actually it was quite timely that we stumbled across each other and I don't even know how it happened, but I was actually up to my elbows in Mike's book, Profit First, and stumbled across you, I'm not sure, somewhere on social media. I guess you just released, released the book and it's kind of in my space, so I, was, I must have been retargeted or something. And I thought, wow, this is, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait to, to speak to you. So in between then and now, I've actually gone off and I've read your wonderful book and I've taken a whole bunch of notes here. And I suppose the purpose of today is just to give our listeners and the viewers out there a bit of insight as to the methodology and I suppose the fundamental like roadmap of what Profit First is and how it applies to you know small business and trade business owners. You're a bookkeeper and an accountant by trade, is that right? So I have a bookkeeping business yep. and prior to that, I was originally a financial planner before I left the corporate world. So I've always worked with small business owners yep. and specifically tradies just from my location of where I am based out on the Hawkesbury River. But there was always a piece of the puzzle missing. They would work really hard, have a really, really great business, but didn't have anything to show for it. And then the cash flow was the massive, was always the number one problem. So this kind of fits that puzzle. I was super excited to find, come across Profit First a number of years ago. It certainly changed the way I run my own business and then allowed me to change you know, tradies businesses time and time again. Yeah. And so I, you're preaching to the choir because I'm, I used to be a plumber. I still am a plumber. I don't do it anymore, but <laughs> I've, still got, I've still got the ticket. Actually, it's like a part of the book that you, it was actually speaking to me, the part where you're talking about how most 90% of tradies live in like tax debt or have some sort of tax debt. And that was me. I was making loads of money as a plumber and having no idea whatsoever what to do with it. And I was just spending erratically and, or not even spending erratically, just not allocating correctly. 
and it all came and caught up on me. And then you, like you said in the book, you spend all this time trying to repay off these debts and you feel like you just end up chasing your tail. So I was kind of refreshed when you said in your book, that was 90% of people because I was glad that I wasn't the minority. <laughs> I'm actually shocked when I, when I get a new client and I ask them if they have a tax debt and they say no, I said, pardon? Yeah, surely you do. And I go, no, I'm like, are you sure? Because it's very unusual. Yeah. It's very, very unusual do a bit of like an overview and a bit of a recap on profit first and just so guys people understand because I mean this is something that I've not even so not so long ago read and I was immediately hooked on it and I've got an implementer who's going through that with me at the moment we're setting it all up and we're doing all this sort of stuff now it's amazing and I love that part in the book where you're talking about having your financial team and we'll get to that in a little bit but I mean that, that alone I think if we can communicate that to people we just say get the right people in your corner I think that is just such a powerful thing because I know I, when I started, I had like, and no offense to the accountants or the bookkeepers out there, but you guys suck at communicating for the better part. And I just had no idea what they were talking about ever. And that was, it was like, I, it took me a while to find a really good accountant that could actually talk to me in English in terms I would understand and break things down, you know? And mm. I think that's so important having the right financial team in your corner because you just, we don't know, like you grow up swinging hammers and you know, laying pipe, you don't grow up, understanding, you know, profit and loss, bank, set, bank statements, balance sheets and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, ironically, I suppose a lot of those things are not, not part of the profit first language, but <laughs> we'll get to that as well. So yeah, give us a bit of an overview as to what profit first is. All right. Awesome. So profit first originally, so the original book was written by Mike Michalowicz five, six years ago, maybe a little bit longer now. And so it's a cash management framework that we use to to manage your cash flow. So we going back to the cold, old envelope system that our grandparents, great grandparents would have used. You know, when they get paid, they would put a certain amount in for their, you know, their loan repayments, their groceries and so on. And when that envelope was empty, well you had to make do. And it's the same concept and we use bank accounts. So in May last year, I was at a mastermind, a really small mastermind, 14 people. Mike was running that mastermind. We all went to lunch, having a conversation. At the end of it, he just kind of looked at me and went, you need to write the Profit First for Tradies book. I, of course, looked at him, thought he'd lost his mind. And he then still had that look on his face like, no, I'm serious. And I went, oh, okay because there are some things in the original version because it's American based that don't suit us here and don't also suit our tradies. So by the time I'd left that day, sent a few emails off and started writing the book. (laughs) I find it difficult to turn down a challenge, no matter how it is. And I'm a numbers girl. Like I've always been numbers. So the thought of writing a book was so far yeah. out of what my realm but the reason why I did it and the reason why I put myself completely out of my comfort zone was because I knew how Profit First had helped my business and other clients that I'd worked with and I've always worked with tradies and I knew tradies needed something simple that spoke to them that was not complicated that they could follow without being being overwhelmed because as you say it's not usually something that you get excited out about Mm -hmm. you just you go to work you work hard you make the money you don't always focus on the numbers side of things which is Mm -hmm. why everyone gets into such trouble with it so the good thing about this this book is well it's really small like you can read this in a weekend which is what i did i read a couple of weeks back and i was it was uh, mike's book's actually quite I found it quite a bit harder to digest. Yours is yeah. a bit more bite sized. So yeah, like that exactly, <laughs> exactly. And uh, mine's like this. Yeah, and yeah I yeah. did that purposely. It was actually much longer. And when I come towards the last, it was the second last edit. I emailed my editor and went, "I want to remove chapters this, 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 and this." Yeah. And he went, "Okay." Yeah. Because I realized, because I, as I said, I always wanted it to be something. I wanted it to be useful. Yeah. I didn't want it to be another book on the shelf. Like nobody yeah. needs more of those. Mm-hmm. I wanted it to be something that you could at least take one or two things from, if nothing else, mm-hmm. and that would kickstart your change with your with your numbers. So th- that was very purposely written that size for that reason. So speaking, I suppose, to a lot of like new businesses out there or people that are considering starting a new business. I love that part in the book where you talk about, oh, she'll be right, mate. You know, that whole mentality, which is so common in Australia. And the reality is far from the truth. She will not be right, mate. But but I think that kind of ties in as well to, I don't know if it's like an ego thing or an ignorance thing or a combination, but the fact that, 
you know, as when we go through our trades, you know, we don't, no part in these programs. I mean, ideally, something like this would be part of the curriculum, you know, and you, they teach you how to make, how to manage your money in business, but they don't. And I suppose, you know, with, in their defense, they can only fit so much into a course, you know, into a program. So it, it really does fall back on you guys as the business owners to really start investing in these things. But, you know, that, that mentality of a she'll be right, it could not be further from the truth. And, you know, I, I hope for your sake, you don't go down that path. But I think being willing to in, invest in education and just sort of appreciating that you don't know these things and you have no, you know, you're not, Chances are you're not going to be the next Mark, next Mark Zuckerberg, you know, like even Mark Zuckerberg sucked with finance, you know, like the business yeah. almost tanked a dozen times. So I think that's really important that like from a mindset point of view that people approach this, you know, the, the finance in their business conversation with, with, with an open mind and appreciate the fact that they don't know the majority of things, especially if you're new, you know, a lot of this stuff you've got to learn along the way. Absolutely. And that's the thing. We want you to learn there's no judgment. Like nobody cares if you've stuffed it up before. I actually don't care how bad a mess my clients are in. I just want you to have the right attitude that going forward, you're going to try something different. You're going to invest in yourself and you're going to make those changes because it, you know, the should be right attitude is okay until you're not. Yeah. And generally that is either a big wake up letter from the ATO or it's a health scare yep. and you can't work anymore because you've been working yourself into the ground thinking if I just, you know, I just make more money, yeah. everything's going to fix itself when in actual fact that usually makes it worse. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing, isn't it? How these things kind of compound pop negatively in, in a lot of cases. I love that part where, you know, even when we're talking about, you know, the, the core principles and how you're saying that, and, and I was guilty of this for years. And even when I started these, the businesses I'm in now, the beginning, I was guilty of doing this, like just sticking my head in the sand mm. and just not wanting to confront it because it, I just knew it was going to be dismal. <laughs> and so my answer was, ah, just don't look at it and she'll be right, you know. Again, terribly, terrible people in my corner financially. But it's kind of refreshing and it's a bit of a revelation when you look at, when you do start becoming familiar with these things and you do visit them weekly and you realize that you are actually in control. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It, I always say to clients as well, I always say it gets worse before it gets better. Mm. Like I don't sugarcoat that. You're going to hate me for a period of time because it is different. It's new. You've been ignoring it for a period of time. Sometimes that's only six months. Sometimes that's six years. Sometimes it's 16 years. So it gets worse before it gets better. But the thing is, as you mentioned, you just need to learn one thing, then mm. the next thing, then the next thing. What I find is people look at the whole picture and go, that's too much. Like I'm never going to understand all of that. So they do nothing. It's like, no, just do one thing. And then the next, and it will then just have that flow and effect. And as you say, you then turn from dread and hate towards it to actually exciting because you can then start to see and have that control, which then means you can go surfing more often or you can do whatever it is you want to do because you have that control rather than just sort of plodding along and continually worrying about what the outcome is. You can actually architect your own outcome of with your business i think as well it kind of dispels that that really super common scenario where especially as tradespeople, you know you might land a huge job and all of a sudden you've got you know 50 100 grand sitting in the bank and you just think oh great time to buy you like people don't really understand what's involved in that ticket and how to manage it correctly you see it a lot with a lot of the builders and the guys out there that are you know, really good carpenters, they go into a building business and all of a sudden they're in charge of these huge budgets you know, from a, from a client investment and they don't, like to, to their defense, they don't really know, I mean, what to do with it. I mean, they might have an idea, like, but they've never actually been taught a lot of this stuff. They kind of got to learn through hard knocks. You hear these horror stories about builders not paying people and for the better part, it's just that, you know, in some cases they just don't know, they're like the money management side of it, you know? And that's what I find. Yes, there is always that element of dodgy builders, tradespeople that are just never intending on paying you. But the majority of those who don't pay their subbies, it's not because they're dodgy and they've done it on purpose. It's just simply because they don't know how to manage yeah. the money. And yeah. as you say, they see all these zeros on the end of the bank account and they're like, oh, that's kind of freedom. We'll, we'll take less interest in that when in actual fact you need to take more because there's 
much larger room for disasters to happen mm. that way. Yeah, it's great. It's sort of, it, it's not about turnover. It's what's left over kind of thing. And I think Profit First does a really good job of defining that. And I love the formula as well, because I mean, typically everyone out there would sort of be familiar with that profit equals your sales minus expenses and Profit First flips it. And they say, well, no, your sales minus your profit equals your expenses, which kind of says uh, keeping in track with, you know, pay yourself, make sure you're paying yourself first, breaking profit, right? And that's the thing. We have the, you know, there's the standard accounting formulas and from those we have our balance sheets and our profit and loss and all that sort of thing. And from a profit first perspective, we absolutely need those things because we need to be paying appropriate tax and so on. But what those things don't do is they don't manage our cash flow and what usually profit is an afterthought, as you said, it comes last, whatever's left. And I don't know how many listeners have had their accountant, you know, slide their profit and loss and end of year paperwork over to them and it tells them they've made a profit on their profit and loss and they are like, but where is it? Is that money? <laughs> but they don't ask the accountant because they are too embarrassed or they think they should already know or they've already explained it. So they leave it and then year after year after year, same thing keeps happening and nothing changes. Mm. So from a profit first perspective, what we are saying is you flip that. So you take your profit first you pay yourself a wage and what's left is your expenses. So what it forces you to do is say, okay, you've got 10 grand this week for your expenses. If you've got 15 grand's worth of bills, you've got a problem. And it forces you to then look at, okay, do I need to review my expenses? Can I cut down on things and all of that type of thing? So it raises a red flag, but also makes you look at these areas that typically you wouldn't look at because you'll just go with the flow, worry about it next week, worry about it next month and borrow from here to pay this and, and so on. So mm-hmm. profit first gives you that framework to allow you to work within. And as I said, it raises those red flags. We don't always want to see them. The sooner we see them, the sooner we can do something about them, the less it happens down the track. I love that borrow this to pay that kind of approach because, I mean, I think there'd be most people out there that would be saying, oh, yeah, I've taken money out of my tax account to pay for something in, you know, in the past, probably never in the goes last back. week. Yeah, it never goes back. No. Tax and super are the yeah. two areas where we see the biggest debt because it's not payable immediately. So, yes, they may be putting some money aside for it, but then when something comes up, then they'll borrow from it. They never pay it back. They're on that constant sort of merry-go-round of of never catching up so yeah this will certainly highlight those areas and um force you to do something about them i like the you know tying in not what your turnover it's what's left over kind of mantra where they're talking about the like the real revenue and how real revenue i'm reading directly from your book here real revenue is your gross income less gst less your materials and subcontractors and that i think that's something that like people sometimes look at their revenue and they just think, oh, you know, we've got this, this is what, this is what our revenue is, but they, it's sometimes, it's a disaster. yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah, absolutely. They just don't. When the, the biggest red flag for me is when I'm talking to somebody and they start talking about their, their revenue. Right. And yeah. It's like, they're oh, talking about their turnover. I'm like, yeah, we're in trouble. No idea. Exactly. Yeah. Because they actually, I don't, I don't care if you're turning over 15 million. Yeah. If you're still losing money, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> you, you can turn over a hundred thousand and be keeping eighty of that. You can be turning over eight million and be keeping none. Yeah. So whenever anyone just talks about that top line there, I get very, very nervous. <laughs> you must be nervous a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, but it also comes back to people don't. And again, this is back to our financial team that we'll talk about as well. That the information that they have available to them isn't laid out in a way that is yeah. useful. So your profit Definitely. loss and your balance sheet, a bit, no, but like, I don't even particularly get excited about those reports no. unless they are laid out correctly. So, And then what I do, we pull the information from those to create a profit first report so we can actually see cash flow wise what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, exactly right. I know, I know exactly what you mean. I mean I have recently, in the last few years, I've been really active in keeping up with my reporting, but I know exactly what you mean. You look at them and you go, Okay. And they're not even always accurate anyway. Like depending, what they don't tell you is, you know, forecasting. They don't tell you what in, what bills you got coming in. And like, it, you know, it's it's kind of like it, it's better than nothing. They're going to be wrong, but it's it's certainly not not the answer. The profit first reporting structure is so black and white. You and can't hide from it. No, it's confronting, which is 
which is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's essentially, I suppose, without going into detail as to all of the different accounts and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. like fundamentally, and you by all means jump in here and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but the Profit First framework is essentially about having a series of different accounts in which you allocate funds to regularly in order to pay different bills or invoices or whatever it might be, expenses out of specific accounts. So for example, tax. In Australia, we have GST. You might have contractors. uh, You might have your general expenses, so on and so forth. And then of course, some of those accounts for your profit and for your own pay. There's a number of accounts. So I in Profit First for Tradies, I have seven foundational accounts. Now people hear that and read that and go, that's overkill. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, you're just like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And that's not going to work. And I always come back with, so how's what you're doing working for you now? Mm. Usually met with a bit of silence. I'm like, you know, give it a go. You can always go back. And we kind of have a bit of a saying is like, if in doubt, open an account. Yeah. Because we, we, it's coming back to your mindset around things at, that you know that that account is specifically for that particular goal of yours and you know that you can't touch it. So physically you can go in and take your money whenever you want. But what we find happens is when you have it split out, you become less likely to start borrowing from that account because you're not just borrowing from an account, you're borrowing from the staff wages account. Yeah. Or you're borrowing from the materials account or you yeah. buy, and it, it becomes more of a deterrent. It, it guilt trips it, you. It, it does. It's guilt trips you. And so, as I said, that you know, we work on there's certain percentages that you work on based on your real revenue and so on. It actually seems more complicated than it is once you understand the fundamentals of it. And that's what I always say to my clients. What we do now is not just for your business now, it's so you understand the foundation. So then as your business grows or changes throughout the years, you can always come back and review, okay, where are we now? Okay go through this process, Mm. yep, these are our percentages, rather than just sort of, it's never a set and forget, unfortunately. That's what I say. It's not like you do it once and everything's rosy. Mm. It is constant improvement, changing, and that's what you need because your business is not going to stay the same. Yeah. And the same as marketing or anything, sales or anything else in your business, you don't set up one thing now and then it lasts you for the next 10 years. Yeah. It changes. So. I love the rhythm with it as well. Like it sort of really encourages you to, like proactively be in there and well it it doesn't it doesn't encourage you it kind of forces you you have to be in there to do it you know and i think that's important because like it's it's one of those things that i feel like it's sort of unless it becomes part of like a process it will continually just get relegated in the list of important things to do for a lot of business owners out there it's and like that's I, one of the the main things. So Mike talks about in his book, the 10th and the 25th is when you do your allocations. Mm. So that in America, they still write checks. So that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're not there. And they're, and they're online banking surrenders. Yeah, that's right. So what I generally suggest for all my clients is once a week. Yeah. For some of my builder clients, they can sometimes stretch that out to once <clears> a fortnight, but generally once a week. And it's literally a 15 minute yeah. appointment with yourself on, you know, Friday at nine o'clock or whenever it may be. You sit down, what income has come in, that's what it was. Do your percentages, do your transfers, and you're done and dusted. Yeah. It's not and then you go, okay, what have I got? I've got my operating expenses, what's in there? Pay my bills. Is there money left? Is there money not? If there's not, then that's another you know, appointment that you make yourself with yourself to work out what that strategy is. Yeah. Just keep it you keep it simple. And what I find is people try to overcomplicate it and make it yeah, far more complicated than it needs to be. And when you just keep it simple and keep that rhythm, I always say it's like you're having a meeting with your most important client. Would you ever ditch that meeting? Would you change that meeting? No, you wouldn't. You've got yeah. to just set that time and keep it. I mean, for the better part, like you say, it, it's, I mean, I, I do mine on Monday mornings and it's literally like a, over a coffee. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot of time, effort or <laughs> resource. I just sit down and look at the percentages, allocate, bang, done. Yeah. yeah. Once once you've got it set up, it's really quite an efficient system. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose testament to implementers like yourself, you know, it what it's like anything. If you start with a blank slate, it can be extremely confusing. So having all the stuff set up, it makes it makes it a lot easier. And I know because I read the book and I thought I can do this. And then I went, no, I can't do this. I'm going to get someone to do it for me. And they did it within like a week. And then I sat there going, why did I even bother wasting <laughs> time with this so and what i find is people doubt themselves and as i said make it overcomplicated. they doubt themselves and then when they work with someone like myself and other profit first professionals they're like oh 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We, we just try to, and because numbers are something that we are not usually as comfortable with, we just put all these roadblocks up as to why it's not going to work and it takes too long and all that type of thing. So like anything, work with a specialist, doesn't matter if it's marketing, numbers, accountant, whatever, it's much more efficient. I think as well, just the fact that like, because it is so, it's such a different way of from, for most people, like there wouldn't be many people out there that would have, you know, have structures similar to that. Although that said, like most people have, might have a tax, well, I won't say most, but some people might have a tax account or, you know, they might have some sort of, you know, account where they can put money aside, but like having somebody that you can call on and say, Hey, is this right? I just, I mean, that's what I did. I just did all my change, change all the, change all the accounts over all the money and stuff. And I was like, this does not look right. And <laughs> and my profit first implementer went through and he went, no, no, actually, that's exactly right. And I was like, oh, okay. But if I didn't have him to call on, I'd probably be sitting there going, I've definitely screwed this up. That's it. And then you would have stopped doing it next week. Probably. Yeah. 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 And, and that's the important thing. It's just to have that, that backup to know, yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. It is quite simple. And so the simple goals as well, I think that makes it really digestible for people. Like I've, I've been in a situation when I started numerous businesses where you sort of have like a, this, this big vision of where you want to go, but no actionable steps to get there. I've talked about this a million times on the podcast in relation to goal setting. And I love the fact that this really is like, it makes it more bite sized. It's weekly. Like you said, you get in there every week and you can chip away at these, at these little bite sized things, which add up to the bigger picture, which I think is so much more powerful, like understanding that compounding effect. And that's the thing. It's about, just step by step, just one thing at a time, just do the next thing, the next thing. And I find my tradies are really bad at goal setting because they think it's, and I must say I was too, I hated it. I hated it many years ago because it was always like everybody who's anybody in the business world will tell you you have to set goals. And I was always, it's all right for them. They have a, a bigger business, a more successful business that, you know, all those excuses, which are the same things that my tradies tell me. But when we just start out small, you know, I just want to pay my GST bill when it comes due this quarter. Yeah. That's little things. Not I want to make a million dollars and retire on an island in, you know, somewhere or other, like just one by one. And then you just keep building and building and all of a sudden 12 months, 18 months, two years down the track, you've managed to implement these goals and, and, and reach them and make them a habit time and time again. I love the little serendipities as well that you sort of talk about in the book there where, you know, in the space of, you know, how having a structure like this in place within your business actually improves things like team morale and, and, and staff retention and all these kind of things. Because I, th I think a lot of people overlook that, you know, if you're constantly paying your, your staff on time because you've got money in the right accounts and you, you know, that, that's a, that's a big thing, especially if you've ever worked for somebody that doesn't pay <laughs> doesn't pay on time. Which I think most <laughs> tradies have worked for somebody at some point in time who hasn't paid you on time. Like it's quite common. And I think get at the moment, for quite some time, it doesn't matter what trade I speak to, getting staff and keeping staff, even getting and keeping subbies can be really difficult. So it's these little things that make a difference. Like you might think like it's, no big deal but if if a subby or an employee knows that they're going to get paid every friday or whenever it is they're going to stick around they're not going to go somewhere else for a couple of bucks more because they don't know what bill over there is like and whether they're going to get paid weekly or monthly or whenever it feels like it so it, it is the little things that just make such a difference yeah and i suppose behind all that is just understanding you know having all those allocations set up within your organization means that you're never going to be in that situation where you're like, Oh shit, I haven't got the money to pay the boys this week. And that's the thing, you know, you, you know, ahead of time that that's going to happen. So you will know, Oh shit, I don't have enough money in there. I need to transfer. Week. I'm going to, I'm going to be short. What do I need to do? So then that's your prompt. Can I, you know, follow up some invoices that need to be paid? Can I fit in a couple of smaller jobs that I know are going to pay me on time? It gives you the opportunity to fill those gaps before they happen rather than shoot it's Friday and I've got no cash to pay the boys. Well, also, one of the, one of the refreshing things I love doing this by the way, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that hate that I do it, but you know, every, every, like because now we're setting up these new accounts and we're basically changed like our expense account. You kind of get to go through, it forces you to sort of go through expenses and go, Oh, hang on. 
do I actually need that anymore? Do I need this anymore? And you like cut out all these programs. Like I'm one of those guys that sees, you know, AppSumo deals come through. I'm like, oh, I'll buy that in case I need it, in, you know, in, in a year's time. But it kind of gives you a bit of an insight as to, you know, what you can potentially remove or, you know, replace, you know. And it changes, it change. and I always say this, Profit First is not about restricting and telling you you can't buy things it's actually the reverse it's giving you the opportunity to buy whatever you want correct but knowing what you want and knowing that it is useful the amount of times i've had new clients come on board and we've done a review and they've been paying for insurances for a car or a truck or a ute that they had sold six nine twelve months ago you know i've lost count because they thought they called or they did call and then the insurance company didn't cancel it. They don't pay any attention. It's 50 bucks a month coming out. And all of a sudden that adds up. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's those little things and it does, it's so interesting to see clients move from the, Ugh, I hate looking at my expenses to let's look at our expenses. And that, that change does happen. And that's the exciting thing because they know if I'm not wasting money here, I can spend that on something else or that can go to my profit account or that can go to, you know, a new staff member or whatever it may be. So again, it's back to that control. They then have more control over their numbers, therefore over their decisions, which yep. makes it much easier for them. I like the part as well in the book where we talk about, you know, the like building, I mean, we touched on it before, the, the fight, building your financial team and having your, you know, the players. But I like how you, at, at the top of that is always you. And this is actually something that I've, I, I've like, I've, I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks, but I mean, you do hear horror stories about people outsourcing all of their finances to their CFOs and there's all people start embezzling and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff going on. But I like how you sort of simplify it by saying, well, there's essentially you, your bookkeeper, your accountant and your profit first expert. Would it be fair to say that the majority of accountants are not familiar with profit first? Yeah, and that's perfectly okay. Yeah. So we all are specialists in our area. And what you want to build on your financial team is like, say, for example, if you've got a plumbing business, you don't necessarily want five plumbers on your team who have got the exact same skill set. Right. Unless that is all you're doing. Like if you're doing a variation of work, you want some plumbers who are good at this yep. and you want some plumbers who are good at that because you've got the variation of work. Same as your financial team. So you want your accountant to be an amazing tax advisor. They actually don't have to know nor understand proper fit, profit first if they don't need to. Mm -hmm. They are just looking from a tax perspective and they're going to advise on your tax situation. Yeah. What they need to be is open and willing to communicate with your bookkeeper and your profit first coach and you. And that I find can be difficult sometimes because, as you said before, accountants and bookkeepers are fabulous, but not everybody is a great communicator. And often I find it, um, same with, with bookkeeping and the, the tradies. Tradies don't know what to ask. Bookkeeper or accountant doesn't know that they need to provide them any other information. So everyone just works independently of each other and that doesn't achieve the result we need. So what we always do is we, you know, work with our clients. Okay, ask your accountant this. Check with the bookkeeper about that. Can mm. you, like, you know, this is what we need. We can do this part, but also you know, follow up these things. And one of the, the thing I get the most feedback on was I never thought to ask that. I never knew yeah. to ask them of that. And the accountants and bookkeepers are usually, you know, probably 95% of the time happy to provide oh, yeah. that information. They just didn't know that you needed it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm always on about your financial team. If you don't have your financial team, it's never going to work. Yeah. But you don't have to know everything about everything. All you need to do is communicate with your team. Yeah. Because you will learn over time, as you say, you'll build up your own knowledge. You are never going to be the specialist in any of those areas, but you will understand and learn to know and love about your numbers much more when you've got a great team that are working with you rather than just sort of independently of each other. So at the back of the book, you've got a checklist on getting started with Profit First. We're doing a little offer, aren't we? We're going to give away some books in our Facebook community. If you guys aren't in the uh, private Facebook group, head across there. Essentially, what you need to do, I'm, when this podcast comes out, I'm going to post a link to the to the Amazon page where you can get a copy of the audio book, the paperback book, or the Kindle version. If you go ahead and purchase the audio book or the digital book, you'll get a the first five people anyway, they'll get a signed copy of Profit First for Tradies sent out to them by Katie where you can go through and attack it like I have with a highlighter and a post-it note <laughs> frenzy. And I must say that is the, nothing excites me more to see a book that has been 
written all over, highlighted. If I get a book like this, is just a fresh copy. If I get a see a client who's got a book like this, I'm like, you're like, yeah, yeah. I read that. Yeah. I haven't done anything. So super excited to see all these post-it notes. In yeah, there. I showed my father this and my dad's one of those people where he reads a book and you can tell that he hasn't even, it, look, it looks like it's, Perfect. it looks better than when it came out of the shop. And I show him my books and he's like, oh my goodness, it gives him all the, <laughs> gives him a, give him a heart relapse. So that's great. Thank you for offering those books as a giveaway. So you guys make sure you head, head across to the Facebook group and you, you can be part of that little promo there. And Katie, I suppose, is there anything that you wanted to close off on before we wrap up? I guess probably my one tip is to just get started. Mm. Just do mm. one thing. As it, and I wrote this book specifically so you don't have to start from the front and go to the end and you don't have to read it all at the same time. You can just go to your section. So the first section is profit, which is obviously all about profit first. So you could just read that section by itself if you wanted to for the moment. Just do what you can. In, but just do something yeah. because your you know your future self six 12 months down the track will be very very thankful that you've just taken one step as i said it might be 15 minutes this week just do something I, I mean the reality is guys if you're driving around from job to job you could probably download the audio book and listen to that within how long is the audio book do you know it's four and a half hours right. so i think something like that but two hours on the, double time yeah speed <laughs> me up that's always my tip when i when you listen back to webinars speed yeah the, because we usually speak a bit slower so you can do that it's like when but i meet yes. when i meet people at events and things and they always say oh you sound so different in in normal speed <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and i'd say to you guys as well look definitely obviously get a hold of the, get a hold of the book because this is specifically designed for for trades people i'd also encourage you to go and if not read certainly listen to profit first by mike because it's just a brilliant book and I don't know, I've spoken about it on the, on the show before, and you actually mentioned it in your book, The Barefoot Investor, which I kind of feel like is it's kind of like profit first, but for personal personal stuff, another great book to read. And that's the thing. We can work, you know, we can nail our business numbers. Business is not providing us with our personal income because we don't know what our personal income is. It's not going to be successful. Mm. So we need to do both. But again, quite often doing both is such a huge mountain to climb that people just can't see that. So again, it's just do one thing at a time, just mm. one step. Yeah. And it's really not that complicated. It's just something different. Like most things, I suppose. It's kind of a metaphor for business and life. <laughs> That's it. Don't be afraid of it. Like if it's not working now, you can't make it any worse by giving something else a try. And so Katie, the website is profitfirstfortradies.com.au, all words, no numbers in there. Yeah. And your email is Katie, K-A-T-I-E at profitfirstfortradies.com if anyone wants to get hold of you. I love questions. Send me any questions because then I know that you've either read, started to read or you, you know, brains turning over so i dare say there'll be some questions come out of this one in, in the facebook group anyway so especially once we start running competitions that's normally when the questions all perk up no it'll be I, i'm not sure if you're in that group but i'll add you yeah no all right well it's been great thank you very much for for your time and congratulations on on your i'll say book but it's more of a blueprint thank you <laughs> <laughs> and yeah guys go and go and get hold of them they're, they're fantastic again i'll post some links to all, where you can get all that stuff in the in the show notes um, i'll also post the links to those, to those places in the facebook group so you literally have no excuse and you'll be emailed them so yeah you have no excuse not to get your hands on a copy all right katie thank you very much no worries thank you that's a wrap thanks <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, that would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.